Let's continue here in chapter 7 and verse 25. And now in verse 25, Paul refers to virgins. And we need to understand that virgins are those holy people within the church, that's who Paul is referring to, who have not yet had sexual relations with the opposite sex. And they still remain unmarried. They have not become married yet. Most of the virgins would expect to become married at some point, but at this time Paul is writing regarding the virgins. He addresses them and he says concerning both the male and female virgins. It's not just females and not just males. Whether you're male or female, Paul is writing concerning the male female virgins. I do not have a command being issued from the Lord. So there is no direct command regarding the virgins. But Paul says, I have a knowing. Again, it's that knowing. He has received that personal information, personal knowledge regarding the virgins who lived in Corinth at this time. And he's explaining, he's giving the best way forward, his advice. And Paul's opinion, receiving the revelation from the Lord Jesus Christ via his Holy Spirit, he says, I give a knowing as I have already been shown mercy. Paul himself had been shown mercy. You know, he deserved maybe to be punished for various activities that he had performed previously. But he was shown mercy. He was not punished. And Paul now, he says, that happened by the power of the Lord. You know, it was the Lord Jesus Christ who showed mercy to Paul. And now he's saying, I'm giving and knowing regarding or concerning the virgins. And Paul says that he is believing. You know, Paul was a believer also. And so are these to whom he is writing. So all the virgins and Paul were in the same category as far as the spirit realm is concerned. And they should all be believing, consequently doing, what is according to God's command. He says, following on logically, I regard it as customary, or he considers it, or supposes it to be legally, lawfully. Okay, what? That this is a beautiful thing, what is, to begin, or, you know, it had already started. It was prevalent in Corinth at this time, on account of the constraint, the particular circumstances or situations that was in Corinth at this time. Having already stood in and standing, it was in, for, in force. Um, if you want to look back at some of that, you can look at 1 Corinthians in chapter 3. He says emphatically that it is a beautiful thing for a man to be in such a manner, to be a virgin at this time. And that word, ma word man in Greek is anthropos. And as a group, that would refer to male and female. So Paul is saying, it is beautiful for a person to be a virgin at this time. There was nothing wrong with it, you know. There was no need for them to be ashamed or feel awkward or anything else when they may have been in a group or an assembly with other holy people who may have been married. In verse 27 Paul advises regarding the different sets of circumstances occurring. He says, are you, any of you, already bound to a wife? If you are, then don't seek to be loosened from your wife, to be severed that bound relationship. Are you already loosened from your wife? Perhaps that already happened previously. Then if you are, you must not look. For a wife, don't be out there looking to get another wife. He said, with emphasis, if I should happen at any time that you would be married, then in that case you did not sin. Getting married is not a sin. Also, if it should happen at any time that the female virgin would marry, then in that case she did not sin. For a female virgin to get married is not a sin. 
Paul was not stopping them from getting married or forcing them to get married. However, the people of this sort are those who will get married, Paul is instructing them. Those who are going to get married at a future time will have pressure. Compression or stress will afflict them, whether it was mental, physical, or from the spirit category. How? With the flesh. That's how the pressure would come if they were going to get married in Corinth, future to Paul's letter. Yes, they were going to have pressure with or by, via the flesh. But emphatically, I spare you, Paul was not going to get into great detail about this pressure that was impending on the Corinthian people at that time. Of course, we know from other areas in the Bible that any pressure which attempts to push a Christian husband or wife away from the truth of God's word would be originating from Satan, the devil no matter how this pressure may be shown forth in the physical realm via the flesh. Anything that tries to push you away from God's word originated from the devil, from Satan. Continuing in verse 29, Paul again addresses the holy people as brothers, reminding them that every one of them and us today, holy people, are brothers in the spirit category. We have the same gift of Holy Spirit. God is our Father. Paul writes, I bring to light, brothers, the specific time is now already having been drawn together. It has been contracted and is still drawn together as to the rest, the remaining topics. So the time for this Corinthian church to freely and outwardly live as holy people in this world had been contracted. He's advising them how to conduct themselves and live their lives the best way possible from this time forward. Of course, each holy person should behave themselves and thereby contribute to every other holy person. Paul brings the truth to light for the purpose and result that every man who have a wife would be as though you don't have wives. In the people who are crying, maybe they were crying, weeping, for some reason they were mourning, as though not crying. And the people joying or rejoicing, as though they're not joying. And the people who are buying, you're out there purchasing things as though you are not holding it down, as though it's not your possession after you purchase it. And the people using the world, deeming it to be needful for a purpose. You know, this world has fallen. But if a holy person is out there using what he feels is appropriate to be able to accomplish something during the everyday living of his life, Paul writes, as not abusing it. Don't be out there using it to the manner of overusing it or abusing the world. No need to do that. Why not? For the outward figure of this world, this present world, and all the activities in it, or of it, passes along. It is passing by. It's only temporary today. 